Hello, I'm Debbie Irwin, and I'm neither a medical animator nor a medical illustrator, but rather a medical narrator. Now, since most, if not all of you here, have advanced degrees in the arts and sciences, I thought perhaps if I spoke with a British accent, I'd sound a bit more intelligent. But then I realized it's probably best for me just to be me and speak normally. But it's true that I can speak the Queen's English because after living in New York City for over 30 years, the accent can rub off on you, if you know what I mean. Now, my purpose today is to talk about voiceovers and you and the role they play in your projects or can play in your projects. We're going to ask the question, is medical narration the icing on the cake? First, let's define our terms. What is voiceover, or VO, as we say in the biz? According to Webster's, the definition is a piece of narration in a movie or broadcast not accompanied by an image of the speaker. Okay, then that begs the question, what is narration? Narration is the act of telling a story, a spoken description of events given during a film or television program. But I would suggest that the world of voiceover is so much more. In fact, Every day, we're hearing voices, some of us perhaps hearing a few more than others, in the form of train announcements, for example, when we're being told, step in and watch the closing doors, when we're on a plane and we're watching a video that tells us how to buckle our seatbelts or what to do in the unlikely event of a water landing, or when we're in our car and the GPS is talking to us, telling us, your destination is on your left, your other left, or when we're having conversations with Alexa in our home, or every day when you call a company and you want to talk to a real person, but instead you're in phone prompt netherworld and you're pressing 000 to try to talk to a real person. And sometimes I do that work as well. Apologies. <laughs> so sorry. Or the innumerable radio, TV, and internet spots that you try to skip past as fast as you can. For this talk, I'm going to narrow our focus to the medical arena. And, again, ask the question, is voiceover a nice addition, like icing, to use on the cake of your animations? Spoiler alert, medical narration is a key ingredient. The cake, you see, is content, healthcare content, and we're eating a lot of it. Healthcare, as we all know, is big business. In 2016, $3.2 trillion was spent on healthcare. And in 2017, $3.4 billion was spent on pharmaceutical ads alone. Medical voiceover spans a very wide spectrum, and there are lots of different types of medical narration, from didactic content, where you have your medical and surgical and anatomical cellular animations, to marketing content, oftentimes very cinematic in nature, where mechanism of disease or MOD animations, or mechanism of action animations, which show how a drug or medical device can function in the body to address that illness. Then there's communication content for students and patients, physicians, healthcare professionals, administrators. And even more specifically, you've got what to expect videos in advance of going in for a surgical operation, the aftercare videos. You've got certification education, pharmaceutical sales tools for the pharmaceutical salespeople. You've got e-learning content, HR, compliance, health benefits content, training videos, in-office videos. You've got apps, product launches, conferences and conventions, radio, TV, and web commercials, online explainer videos, and a lot more. So, who are the content cake producers? Well, they're the writers, animators, illustrators, and videographers. They have science backgrounds, and they're in business to communicate complex ideas simply through imagery, text, and or symbols to make a topic easily understood. So, who are the consumers of the content cake? Well, you've got physicians and patients, you've got caregivers, healthcare professionals, you've got parents and kids, sales reps, investors, donors, to basically everybody. So, if you're not already using video in your work, you may be wondering why it's beneficial. First, I'm going to refer to a couple of people who'll help answer that question. Adam Nee, who's the supervisor of visual services at Harvard's Boston Children's Hospital and a member of the Biocommunications Association, he produces over 100 videos a year. He did some research and found that video resonates with their audience better. 
video makes it easier to tell stories than with just text or images, that patients stay on their website four times longer when a video is present, and, he said, the most important piece of the video puzzle is audio. There's someone else who you might recognize who also has an opinion on this topic. George Lucas of Star Wars fame. He says that audio is 50% of every film he produces. That's half the content cake. So, why use audio? Well, not all animators and video producers do. They don't all realize the importance of adding audio, the spoken word, to the mix. But professional voiceover is a key ingredient, and it's one of the layers in that content cake. There are many reasons why professional medical narration is a key ingredient and should not be considered an afterthought, but rather should be factored into the baking process. Here's why. 1. People learn through different modalities. Visual, kinetic, auditory, sometimes a combination of all of them. Why limit one of the channels to the brain and inhibit understanding if someone learns best through hearing what the message is? 2. Silent films are history. Yeah, the brain expects to hear sound when seeing videos, so any animation will feel like it's missing something without audio. 3. The visuals, of course, tell the story, but a script can go into greater detail and breathe life into the nooks and crannies of the illustrations, expounding, elucidating, drawing the viewer's attention to what's really important and to nuances that might otherwise be missed, because details delve deeper. And four, a quality narration completes a project, makes it more professional, more powerful, and gives the project greater credibility. To illustrate this point, I'm going to show you an animation done by Thomas Brown at Vessel Studios. He presented this at the AMI Cleveland conference a few years ago. It's a 15-second silent animation, which he then showed again with sound effects. When I was in the audience watching this, I felt like there was something missing, that a voiceover to explain the content was missing. So with his permission, I have the 15-second clip to show you here in three versions. The first is silent. The second is with sound effects, and the third is with the sound effects and my voiceover. And I invite you to come to your own conclusions. What's great about this is he's making these sound effects by ripping a piece of paper and crumpling that piece of paper. During transcription, a segment of DNA is copied into RNA by the enzyme RNA polymerase. So, how do you touch a heart? Well, through excellent storytelling. Excellence matters in all of the ingredients, in writing, in the illustrations, in the animation, in the art direction, in the editing, in the music, and the voiceover. Any quality video production is going to have clean imagery, engaging content, and listenable sound. So, of course, you think that you're going to use a professional for all of these components, right? But, more often than not, people use a pro for everything but the VO. And here's the problem with that. Bad audio can ruin good video, and I have some samples to share with you in a moment. Why invest months and months of time and thousands upon thousands of dollars on all of these elements? The writing, the illustration, the animation, the art direction, the editing, and then leave the audio as an afterthought to be recorded by mm, Janie, the secretary down the hall. She's not too busy and she has a nice voice. Or the doctor, who's the content expert. We'll get back to the doctors in a moment. Video producers across the spectrum, be it for medical, explainer, corporate, gaming videos, they all know that crappy audio will turn off viewers. People will tolerate poor video, but if the sound is bad, they disengage. And who can afford that? There are two major areas where sound can go south. One is due to the narrator, and the other is due to the recording environment. Let's talk about the environment first. More important than an expensive microphone is the room that you record in. It makes a huge difference to the quality of your audio. Are you recording in a professional studio or recording booth? Terrific! Is the room soundproofed or acoustically treated with panels or foam? Terrific! 
If not, background noise becomes a huge issue and presents itself in many forms. For example, the HVAC system, turning on and off or constantly running at a low hum, something you're probably not even aware of. Can you hear planes outside or sirens outside? Are there people talking outside your door? Can you hear people walking upstairs or seemingly moving furniture when they're pushing out their chair from their desk? If you're wearing a mic, is it placed properly or is it underneath the lapel obstructing the sound? If you're someone who likes to wear jewelry, like me, that's a real problem because as you move, the jewelry moves and makes noise. And speaking of noise, what kind of clothes are you wearing? Are they quiet clothes or noisy clothes? If you move around right where you are now, you can listen to hear if your clothes are noisy. Every day when I record, I have to be sure that I'm in quiet clothes. The next area of concern is with the narrator. Now, just because you talk doesn't mean you're a good storyteller. Just because I draw does not make me an artist. And just because someone's an expert doesn't mean they're great at communicating their expertise. Remember, we're all in the business of telling stories. So here are some of the problems you might encounter with a narrator. The delivery could be boring, monotone, or flat. Maybe they don't enunciate clearly or mumble. Are the words pronounced properly? Is their speed consistent or do they speed up or slow down? Does their volume remain constant or is it really strong at the start and then trails off at the end? Do they have heavy accents maybe making hard to understand them? Do they know proper microphone technique? Can they change their vocal delivery depending on the audience they're speaking to? For instance, how you would speak to a physician is different than how you would speak to a senior citizen, and that's different from how you would speak to a child. Can they convey confidence, credibility, warmth, empathy? We all talk all day long, so how hard can it be? So you have an expectation that the voiceover should be an easy thing for anyone to do. But the reality can be quite different the results can fall flat. Let's get back to our doctors. With the help and permission from Mark Shornack and his team at the Barrow Neurological Institute, I'm going to share some snippets of audio recorded while surgeons were being filmed during a procedure. Some of these people are icons in their worlds, so people want to hear them speak regardless of whether or not they're intelligible. Some of you may have encountered physicians who might not have the notoriety, but do have the ego that prevents them from letting a professional voice talent narrate their content. In our first example, we're going to hear a popped P. Now, what happens oftentimes with P words is that you get a plosive. There's a burst of air when you say a P word. In fact, if you put your hand up in front of your mouth and say popped P, you'll feel that burst of air. And that burst of air gets distorted in the microphone unless you know how to address that problem. And the solution, actually, is to say any word with a P with a smile. So if you smile while you say popped P, you won't feel that same burst of air because the air is dispersed. Preoperative MRIs. In our second example, this surgeon isn't quite sure what she wants to say, and so she stumbles a little bit with her speech. And this can be difficult to edit out cleanly when you're editing the video and the audio. So it's left in oftentimes because you can't do it cleanly. You, you just make it worse. The towers are removed and the all incisions are closed. Finally, this is an example of someone who starts out really strong and then his voice fades away. Whether he's turning away from a stationary microphone or if he's just not aware of the importance of maintaining his performance as he's narrating his work, he starts strong and then his voice fades out. This video illustrates brachytherapy tiling of an anaplastic astrocytoma resection bed. Now, lest you think that I'm here to bash content experts, I also have samples from voice talent to further illustrate my point. These come from a project for AstraZeneca that I was hired to cast and find the talent and also a composer and produce the audio package. I was out of the running for consideration as the voice talent for this project because I had voiced something for their competitor. So our first example I call Mr. Movie Trailer, and you'll understand why when you hear this. His delivery of the text is highly inappropriate for this content. A contributing factor to the risk of relapse may be minimal residual disease, or MRD. MRD is defined by the presence of hairy cells even after complete response to early lines of therapy are observed and may account for the 40% relapse rate over time. Then we have the scrambler. 
now this person, whether it's just a mistake and he didn't realize it or he just confuses his letters, uh, he talks about minimal residual disease, MRD, but he refers to it as MDR. And he also pops his pee and has a little bit of an inappropriate, dramatic delivery. A contributing factor to the risk of relapse may be minimal residual disease, or MDR. MDR is defined by the presence of hairy cells even after complete response to early lines of therapy are observed. Now our last person, Mr. Mumbler, I consider an example of someone who can't pronounce simple English words correctly. So it would be uh, dangerous to have him tackle a word like sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia, which is an ice cream headache. Based on multiple studies, repeated front lines of therapy are associated with lower response rates, shorter duration of response, and the increased risk of adverse events. The molecular characteristics of these lingering malignant cells Tongue-twisting terminology isn't for everyone. Just because someone is a professional voice talent doesn't mean that they're skilled at performing all different kinds of genres. Medical narration is very specific, and not everybody is qualified to do it. This is the work of artist Dustin Yellen, who creates these psychogeographies. They're 3,000-pound microscope slide glass sandwiches with humans trapped inside. And on each layer, he uses paint and found objects to create these beautiful multimedia works of art. This series was inspired by the New York City Ballet, in fact. And I think it's a wonderful metaphor for the point that I'm trying to make about the importance of adding all of these layers to create true harmony in your projects. So, as I said at the top of this talk, voiceover is an essential ingredient. Sound is invisible, but it's vital. So I encourage you to bring audio into the mix early. Take audio seriously, and your presentations will rise to the top, because quality ingredients make for quality outcomes. And in my opinion, the icing on the cake is the sweetness that comes from collaborating with quality creatives. Thank you so much for listening, and stay in touch.